Potter with the Cleveland County Arts Council. I'm your program and events coordinator there, and I just wanted to, um, first of all, uh, welcome you to the video. Uh, this is video two on how to make uh, these houses and uh, help us make an exhibit for the uh, Cleveland County Arts Council uh, upcoming, hopefully, here in the fall. First video really detailed the idea. Um, I really wanted to, uh, you know, first of all, acknowledge sort of the moment we're going through and then uh, talk a little bit about the idea. So if you haven't watched the first video, please go back and do so um, because it might uh, lead you in a different path than um, finishing up these videos. That being said, if you're here to learn to make a house, you're in the right place. Um, this is by no means a um, scientific way of doing it. It is the way that I have developed uh, through the past couple weeks. But so anything you want to do to change it, any other ways or, or techniques that you have um, at your disposal, please use them. If you don't feel like making houses, again, this entire project is about you showing off your art that you made while you were in quarantine. So first things first. Um, when it comes to the actual technical application of, of making these houses, uh, there are a few tools, and I'll go over the tools at the beginning of the video here. Um, but some of those tools that we're going to be using are either sharp or very hot. Uh, the hot glue gun goes up uh, over 300 degrees on high for me. Um, and of course, um, you know, any utility blade that's worth anything is going to be very sharp. So please um, exercise caution when making these uh uh, items. If you are a seasoned veteran with the, the hot glue gun and the uh, utility knife, you already know this. And if you are someone who is just picking some these, this stuff up for the first time to try it, uh, please do exercise caution. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, let the uh, time lapse start. We're going to start with the basic supplies, uh, talk a bit, little bit about that, and then we will get into the, the cutting out and construction. All right, so you're going to need a hot glue gun and glue sticks, a utility knife, or an X-Acto blade, whichever works for you, or you can use both, a straight edge, and a pencil. And of course, one thing I didn't take a picture of was lots and lots of cardboard. You will need cardboard. So what I'm gonna be doing here to start out, first of all, I, I started this uh, video uh, being much longer and having long explanations that I did live while I built this house, but it uh, didn't quite work out that way and I didn't wanna give you a two hour video. So I sped everything up and I'm doing a little commentary over top. So if you see me pointing at things, you'll know why. Anyway, what I'm doing here is getting the base, and I wanted to show you, this is the measurements, and I'll make sure this gets posted on Facebook or, or on our website. Uh, this is the measurements for the basic house that I've built. Really, the, the height and the width are the most important things to me. Um, how the shapes come out aren't um, nearly as important, and anybody uh, that tr tries to do this project uh, can make any changes that they wish to see to their house. Uh, this is not set in stone. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that template that I've traced out and I am uh, cutting it out, then taking it and putting it over top of the uh, another piece of cardboard. So I get two matching pieces. So uh, what I'm doing here is just cutting out that second piece. There's a guest appearance by my cat Hamilton. And so I'm just cutting out those two pieces to match each other. I want them to, when I lay them on top of one another, uh, I want them to match up and then I've decided which one's the front and the back and you can do that uh, by uh, spending some time looking at the cardboard and deciding which piece or face of the of the piece you would like to be showing facing out and then I mark them front and back. Now what I'm doing is taking another uh, uh, piece of cardboard and measuring it to eight inches width. We know that the bottom of the house is eight inches wide, so I want the house to be square all the way around. It doesn't have to, again, be perfect, but I'm just cutting out a piece that's eight inches wide in order to get the right width. Now what I'm doing is curling the cardboard because I know that I gotta get up and around uh, the piece that I'm trying to match up there, and then I'm going to uh, put that in place and measure out where the bottom, where the bottom of the, uh, um, piece is going to be and then just cutting that out and making sure it matches up and looks good 
then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. It is uh, probably a good idea that you mark everything as you go with a pencil, just saying what it is, what side of the house it's supposed to be. So that way, when it is time to put it all back together or put it together, it will be um, easy to um, figure out how it goes together. Um, then the last thing I'm doing uh, before we start any construction uh, is to uh, is to make the base. I make the base by cutting a piece of cardboard into a 10 inch by 10 inch square. I know the bottom of my house is eight inches wide, so I know the house will fit on a 10 inch by 10 inch square. So now what I'm doing instead of starting to build the house is I actually want to go ahead and make the cuts to get the windows and the doors um, uh, made so that that way I don't have to try to do that while the building is standing. I can do that, do this while they're separate pieces of cardboard. Uh, for uh, reference, and you'll see on that um, drawing that I did, um, the door is typically four inches tall for the size that I make. Nobody is saying that it, yours needs to be. In fact, all these measurements are uh, up for uh, change, but um, my door is four inches wide if you'd like to be at the scale that I'm working at. Then what I do is just take two windows. I want to upstairs and a downstairs, and I make two rectangles and then bisect those rectangles with a line through the middle left to right and a line through the middle from top to bottom. Then I uh, just equal uh, measure a distance between those lines at the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. And then I connect those dots left to right, top to bottom, uh, so that uh, I get a T or a um, cross uh, in my windows. And then I'm, what I'm doing now is working uh, carefully, because you really do want to think carefully here about how to handle this. Um, you uh, want to make sure that you don't cut through the cross beams. Um, so you just want to kind of take your time and you'll see that's what I'm kind of doing here. Just sawing away a little bit, making sure that I'm not um, damaging that cross. But uh, and I, what I'm going to do is just poke each window out as I get them through. And you can see on the other side, I had a little bit of trouble with the paper ripping. But as long as it looks good on the outside, uh, the, the side that's going to be showing, then you should be OK. Uh, I did the same thing with the window upstairs. And we um, so that front is finished for basic construction. Now what I've done is taken both of the sides and I'm doing the exact same thing. I am just measuring a rectangle, then uh, bisecting that uh, rectangle both uh, in the middle, both uh, from top to bottom and left to right, then measuring equidistant dots between those lines or from, the, from those lines uh, so that I can connect those dots and um, pop those windows out. So now I have two well, I uh, skipped forward a little bit here, but now I have two windows, one on each side of the building. I do not typically do anything on the back. If you would like to have a back door and window and the house to be able to be shown 360, that is totally up to you. But for most, uh, for my efforts here, I'm really just trying to keep it um, uh, simple with what you're going to see when the house is um, being displayed. So now what I'm doing is deciding where the house is going to go, and I'm going to just get a hot glue gun out, and I'm going to just take and put a, hot, a bead of hot glue on both sides of that wall. And I haven't even touched the other side of that door yet, really. I'm just trying to get this bottom piece attached so that it's nice and in place. It's not gonna wanna stand great, but you can see I can even let go and it works. Now, when the structural integrity will start to come as you start to attach walls. Um, with the walls on the sides, I just try to attach that front corner first. I want to have the leeway in the back to move it left to right. Um, so that I can make it match up with the back, but this is just about getting the front um, corner attached so that the building um, has a left and right wall that I can attach the back to. And then slowly as I go through, uh, all I'm doing then is taking the uh, back piece, uh, getting those corners attached, getting the bottom of that attached, and then slowly what I'll do is just add um, beads of hot glue to reinforce all the way around. And you'll find that if you use enough hot glue um, that these houses are very um, tough. They're, they're, they stand up on their own. They don't have any issue of trying to fall over. And if you um, are noticing that seams aren't great or you want things to look a little tighter, you can always throw a little bit more hot glue at it and try to get it to, to match up. Um, so now that I've done that, I've got the house together. I'm just going to take a piece of cardboard and start to build a roof. Now, one of the things you want to think about with the roof, with the way I've done it, is there's sort of a concave um, shape 
to the roof on both sides. So you do want to work with the grain of the cardboard. Make sure that you'll be able to bend that a little bit um, to your, uh, to your uh, specifications. Um, and then what I've done is just basically put a piece of cardboard up against it um, and measured a little bit um, of excess on both the, um, the front and back and on the side of the building and just met the roof right up into the tip uh, uh, or to the peak of the roof. But as you can see, there is overhang on both the front and the back and on the side. And I really am just trying to meet that line up in the, at the peak of the roof. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, measuring the front and back to match up. And then making sure I give myself just a little bit of lip, then drawing that out so that I have a nice line to work with. And then getting the utility knife and cutting it out. And then when, once that's done, I'll just glue that to the, uh, to the last piece, the last open piece of the house. Gluing first at the top and then around the edges, making sure that all of my connections are nice and tight and look as, uh, as good as they can. Um, this is cardboard, so you can, there's only so much you can do. You're going to see some corrugation. You're going to see um, some gaps here and there, and all of that is okay. We, we've got painting and detailing to do to help hide some of those um, imperfections and, and so forth. Um, but that is the basic step-by-step uh, -step in a very quick manner on how to do that. If you have any questions, please email me at alan at ccartscouncil.org, and I will be glad to help you if you would like to be part of this project and this eventual show. Thank you for watching the video, and stay tuned for part three, which will go over the details, and part four, which will go over very quickly uh, the painting of these uh, houses. Uh, the Cleveland County Arts Council thanks you uh, for uh, watching the video and have a great day.